everybody, G Macarini, Training Captain with Poodle Fire Authority. In this video, we're going to be talking about elevated master streams and more specifically, appropriate water application using this tactic. Oftentimes, we go out and train and we raise the arrow as high as we can and we flow water straight back down to the ground. This may be effective when we actually apply it on the fire ground if we have holes in the roof that allow for that water to get to the burning surfaces inside. If not, then the roof is going to do what it's designed to do and shed that water straight back down to the ground. Here's a couple pictures to illustrate that point. This video is going to go through some suggestions on how to go out and train for better water application using elevated master streams. First thing we're going to do is look at a general setup with using Tower 1 and a single engine with the expectation to flow at least a minimum of 1000 GPM. Where you decide to position and park the apparatus for this type of operation is going to be the focal point of the system. Let's take a moment to think about some of the things that we should consider when placing our aerial device for elevated master stream use. Number one is going to be fire location. Where do we want to put the water? And then from that is what kind of area do we have available to us in relationship to that fire location to be able to position our apparatus. In that area, we need to look at overall ground conditions. You know, what areas are going to be the most stable for the delivery of the forces that we're going to be applying back to the ground. The next thing we need to think about too is how we're going to align the aerial device and the nozzle in order to get it to the fire based off of our aerial position and the center line axis of our ladder. We want to try to do everything in line with the center line of the aerial as best as we can. That means positioning the aerial so that the nozzle is pretty much at a zero degree rotation from side to side. All of our aerial apparatus will allow us to flow water pretty much at 90 degrees from center line. But if we can get that in line as close to zero as possible, that's more ideal. The reason for that is the consideration of nozzle reaction. Now Tower 1 has a smooth bore and a combination nozzle. <clears throat> and Ladder 5 just has a combination nozzle. With both of those, roughly the nozzle reaction is going to be half of the GPM that we're flowing. So if we're flowing 1,000 GPM, then our nozzle reaction is going to be 500 pounds. That's pretty substantial. And when we think about the nozzle being at 90 degrees from center line, that's going to be 500 pounds of force that's pushing, side-loading that aerial, basically. Um, and we just need to have that in the back of our mind. So if we can keep that in line, as close to zero degree rotation with our nozzles, we're going to be in a much better position. The fog nozzles or combination nozzles are going to have a little bit higher nozzle reaction, typically about 50 psi um, increase in nozzle reaction. You can feel it on Tower 1 when you switch between a uh, smooth bore and a combination nozzle. So keep that in mind that you're going to have a little bit more nozzle reaction on those combination nozzles. In this first example of a training evolution we want you to go out and try, you're going to see that Tower 1 is going to be pos positioned uh, to the west side of the tower and they're going to be throwing their aerial to kind of that Bravo side of the burn house to the second story window. Now this isn't ideal like we said as far as the positioning of the nozzle in relationship to the nozzle reaction. Um, but one thing we need to consider too is anytime that we're flowing water into a building, we may not need to flow the full 1000 GPM. In this example, we were flowing right around 500 GPM, and uh, the other thing to consider too is that the aerial was at a low elevation and it wasn't hardly extended at all. So um, in those types of setups, we're going to be in a much more stable position in order to be able to have that kind of nozzle or side loading of the aerial occurring. When you go out and drill on this, uh, be, be sure not to flow any water towards the ceiling of the burn house. Uh, if we do that, we're going to damage all the uh, heat tiles that are going to be on the ceiling and we don't want to do that. So make sure that you flow your nozzle straight through the window and then straight out the door on that delta side. 
feel free to sweep the floor if you want, which I think would be a great tactic if the fire is right there and we have a lot of burning surfaces towards the floor, we can definitely use the area aerial to kind of sweep that floor. So you can do that in this exercise. If not, flow it out the backside and allow the grate and the uh, handrail on the backside to kind of disperse that water so it's not damaging the prop farther to the north. The next video is going to demonstrate the, the second drill that we want you to go out and try to perform. You can keep your aerial in the same location as the first drill and then all you're going to do is swing over to the north side of the drill tower and what we're going to do is we're going to use those uh, patio platforms that extend out of, from the building on that north side to simulate a ceiling that would be just inside of a window. So maybe we need to flow water through a window and maybe it's a type 1 or type 2 constructed concrete uh, building. Uh, that we can use that ceiling to deflect that water that we're putting inside to disperse that through uh, that fire room. So in this video you're going to see Tower 1 positioning towards the north side of the tower and deflecting their water off the bottom side of those balcony platforms. We can also use our aerial devices for low elevation, single story, large commercial structures, or even strip malls. Tower 1 can perform this tactic very effectively. Ladder 5 cannot, so I encourage you to get into the Ladder 5's owner's manual, look at the limitations and capabilities of the nozzle on Ladder 5, and imagine Ladder 5 being at below a zero degree inclination and then trying to flow the nozzle upwards and see if you can determine why Ladder 5 is incapable of performing this. All right, so that's it. Hopefully you found this information to be beneficial and a couple different options on different ways to go out and train for elevated master stream and water application. After you perform this training, have discussions with other support companies, share your thoughts, different ways of applying this, and then also talk to the engine companies. Let them know what you're training on so they know what's available to, to them out there as far as the tactic for fire suppression. With all this stuff, it's always a good opportunity to get back into our owner's manuals and understand the limitations and uh, capabilities, particularly with those nozzles, as far as range of motion, all that. So I encourage you all to do that. I want to give a shout out to A-Shift Tower 1 and Engine 12 for helping coming out and filming this video and coming up with the curriculum. Uh, go out there, have fun, and train hard. Yeah.